thank you lord in jesus name amen thank you lord thank you thank you lord hallelujah good morning church amen i trust god that all is well with you and your household amen Thank God for all the many, many testimonies that is still happening in the house. Even though we meet online, but we're still hearing, you know, good news upon good news in the lives of everyone, every household represented in church. And we just want to give God praise. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good. He answers prayers. Amen. Glory be to God. I want to encourage you to, um, because you're in the comfort of your home, to try and still be very, very attentive to the word of God. Amen. Refuse to be distracted. Hallelujah. So, um, in the last um, about three or four Sundays, we'll be talking on prayers. Amen. Talked of um, reasons for unanswered prayers. Hallelujah. Talked of why we should pray. Last Sunday, I talked on the right way to pray. Amen? The right way to pray. And so this today, hopefully, I'll be rounding this up. And whatever I've not talked about when it comes to prayers, I'm sure that in subsequent messages, I will interject them. Amen? So this Sunday, we'll be talking about the different types of prayers. Hallelujah. It's important to know that there are different types of prayers. And why is it important? It's not in the it's not um in the form of being, you know, um how would I put it now, being legalistic or being very formal before God. It's a case of having an understanding how you can best be how, you, how your communication with God can be very effective. Amen how you can communicate effectively, you know, your mind, you, um, with God, to God. Amen? Hallelujah. So we will be looking at different types of prayer. To pray right, it's important that you know that there are different types of prayers. So not that if you mix them up or sometimes, uh, you know, you, you, um, l- let, me, uh, let me explain how things work out sometimes. Sometimes in a praying for maybe like an hour or 30 minutes or so, we jungle everything together. But you see, God is not going to say, because he didn't put one before two or three or four, therefore I'm not going to answer you. Hallelujah. And so we see sometimes people can pray. Um, they can pray something that is not very scriptural for 30 minutes. And in one minute, they pray something that is scriptural. God still take that which was prayed in one minute, you know, and walk with them and answer them. So somebody can go before God and just whine, cry, and do all those things for a long time. And say, oh, look at God. Look at what is happening to me. God, look at what I'm going through. God, look at this. God, look at that. God, look at this. Then in the last minutes or five minutes of his prayer, I say, God, but you're a merciful God. You're gracious. You're kind. You look unto your children with pity. Lord, I have this need. Thank you because you know I have this need and you omit it. God is not going to say because you wasted the first um, 25 minutes of your prayer time and pray only these five minutes, I'm not going to answer. Or no, 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 no. So, so many, sometimes that is how, you know, when we are before God, we, we, we behave like that. Amen. But just imagine if for the 30 minutes that you were before God, you actually spent it praying right. Just imagine. Just imagine. Hallelujah. There, there's something else I was going to leave out from this series, but I think it's, I think it's important that I mention it. Amen. Because sometimes people wonder, you know, volume of prayer, having a consistent prayer life and all that. Does it really matter? Can't I just pray like him? Um, can't I just talk to God maybe like two, three minutes and walk away and all those kind of things? Is it the same with somebody who pray consistently and have 30 minutes, one hour, f- five hours and prayers, are, you know, time of prayer and all that? The Bible tells us in Revelation concerning our prayers, generally, generally, Revelations 
in chapter 8. I'm not going to be able to stay long on this because it will take me out of my service message for today. But I'd like to mention it since I'm rounding up prayer just in case somebody is wondering about it. So the Bible tells us, let me read from verse 1. I'm actually going to verse 4. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense. You know, censer are things that they burn incense with, and you, you, you receive incense like you see. If you, if you have ever been to any of these Orthodox churches, maybe like Catholic church, you see the they have like incense and they burn all those kind of things. So, so having with him a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it. Now look at this. With the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. <laughs> And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire and of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thundering and lightning and Earthquake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody says, what is the meaning of that? It shows to us that the volume of our prayer matters. Having enough incense, remember. Says I with him incense and offered it with the prayers of the saints. So him having incense without the prayers of the saints or if you have very little prayers, very small quantities, small, you know, because the more you have to offer, the more the high priests have to offer, but the more the angels have to offer, the more we get back here on earth. It's a, the, and moving forward in verse 4, in verse 5, it says, I took the golden ends and filled it with fire on the altar and cast it into the earth. So it what the saints offer, the prayers of the saints that ascended up to heaven, that was received, is what they had to work with. So just in case, sometimes we wonder how our prayers work. Does it matter to have um, quality prayer time, to pray right, to pray, you know, not just get used to um, drive through kind of prayer. Hey, Lord, how are you good? You know, you know, I need this, I know, you know, I need that, I know that, and you walk away. Um, and think that is sufficient. Just when you think that, remember the scriptures. Amen? Remember Revelation chapter 8 and what it tells us concerning the prayers of the saints, concerning, you know, how it is mixed with incense and offered, hallelujah, at the altar and is poured back on earth. It's poured back on earth. And it's received as voices, as thundering and lightning and earthquake, you know, and all that. But it's not telling, you know, for example, when God um, touched down at my son, I remember what the Bible tells the children of Israel say, no, 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 no. Um, we don't want to go where God is. This is a scary sight, you know. But one of the things that you see with the presence of God is that it touched down, you know, there are earthquakes, there's, there's, there's a whole lot of thundering, there's a whole lot of lightning and all that. And the Bible says it's returned to us, it's sent back to us, and it comes back to us as what? The same, the same, the same um, words I use here. So return back to the earth, it says, as voices, as thundering, as light, and as an earthquake. Glory be to God. That's why it's important for you to pray over issues and pray and take out time and really pray over issues. Hallelujah. And not just gross over it and just, you know, spend two, three minutes and be satisfied in your heart. I've prayed over it. 
It's not that God requires, you know, God won't hear until you pray volume, but it is it's necessary for you, according to the scripture, according to what you see here. Hallelujah. Now let me go back to what I was going to talk about. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's important for you to pray right. I mean, it's um, Ephesians um, chapter 6, you know, uh, let me read tells us this. In verse 18. Say, praying always with all prayer. So we know that there are different types of prayer. With all praise. Hallelujah. And supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. In um first, I think it's first Timothy chapter two, where God wants us to pray for everyone. First, first Timothy two verse one says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks. Hallelujah. Be made for all men. So we see here outline in outlining certain types of prayers, telling about different types of prayers, and encourages, admonishes us to pray them for all men. Give thanks for all men. Intercede, intercede for all men. Make supplications for all men. Hallelujah. They say, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Philippians 4 tells us to be, uh, to be anxious for nothing. 4, 6. So be Say, so be careful for nothing. Say, so, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Say, so let your requests be made known to God. So it tells us an effective way of communicating with God. Hallelujah. Say, so, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Say, so, let your request be made known to God. Talk to God about these things. Thanksgiving and requests. How does it work? Amen? Because majority of the time, what we do as believers is that we go to God and just make our request. Just make our request. The Bible tells us, we read this in um, early on in Psalm 100, to enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. So it's important to know to go before God with thanksgiving and with praise. And all these are necessary if you must pray right. Glory be to God. If you must pray right. Somebody say, is it necessary to know exactly how to pray? Is it that necessary? Can't I just talk to God anyhow and not any, any means? Look, the Bible tells us in Romans and chapter 8, let me move back again to that chapter 8. The Bible tells us that sometimes we don't know how we ought to pray and what we are supposed to pray for as we should. And look at this. He said, then, but the Holy Spirit helps us. God didn't say it doesn't matter. He said, don't, don't worry. Even if you don't know how, don't worry. Just pray it anyhow. No. The Bible says, but the Spirit helps us. It helps us. Why? Because it's important to pray right and to be able to um, pray over things the way you should. So in a, in, a, in a scenario, in a case where we don't know how to pray right, or when we don't know what to pray for, the Bible says the Holy Ghost helps us. Hallelujah. That's just to make you understand how important it is that when you speak with God, that you speak right or you know the right way to communicate with him. You're not going to always pray the spirit over every matter. So when you have to pray in your understanding, now it's important that you speak right. If you are praying the spirit, guess what? Because it's the spirit that grants you utterance. You cannot pray wrong. But because you, we don't always pray in the spirit, 
why it's important to pray in the Spirit concerning all things. But, the, but 1 Corinthians 4, 14 tells us, Paul, you know, speaking about prayer, he said, then how will I pray? He says, I will pray on my understanding and I also pray in the Spirit. It's the right combination when, it, when, when you pray, you know, concerning an issue. So you pray in the Spirit, but you also pray your understanding. In other words, you, you, you pray, you know, in the language that you know to speak. Then I also pray in the Spirit. So you can't pray in the Spirit. Or you shouldn't form a habit of praying only in the Spirit over every issue in your life. You should also know to do what? To pray in your understanding. In your understanding. Now, when you have to pray in your understanding, guess what? It's important that you pray right. Glory be to God. So here, we, one of the um, different types of prayer, one that sticks out every time, you know, is a prayer of supplication. This one, we all make it. Amen? I mean, 90% of the time when we go before God is supplication. Hallelujah. You know, a prayer of supplication is, a, is one humbly and earnestly asking God for something. You know, and you go before God to ask for something in your life, something that is needed. Like the Bible tells us, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. So there is the prayer of supplication. Now, if you remember what we talked about in the, when we talked about the Lord's Prayer, we highlighted, uh, you know, uh, different things when you come before God, acknowledge. Now, this, this, this um, part of supplication is still there when the Bible tells us, it says, you know, I ask for your daily bread. Amen. And it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it says, and, and uh, give us this day our daily bread, I said. Now you pray for your need. There's a provision where you pray for your need, where you seek God's help for your need. And that's making supplication for your need. Now, one thing must be told that while there are different types of prayers, it's important that you know how to combine them. So you know how to combine whether it's supplication, whether it's thanksgiving, whether it's worship, like we still talk about these different types of prayer. But you must know how to combine them. Because in actual prayers, like we find out in the Lord's Prayer and Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray, a number of these prayers were combined. Hallelujah. So there was a prayer of worship. Hallowed be thy name. Where you adore the name of the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. Speaks concerning our need. Amen. And several times in the Bible we see people make an earnest, you know, uh, and a humbly, you know, um, supplication, you know, to the Lord. Seeking and asking God fervently concerning different things in their life. Psalm, the book of Psalm is full of supplications. But it's also have a lot of thanksgiving and all that. But you have a lot of it there. And there are people in the Bible who for the things that they desire, for the things that they've been denied for long, for the things that they seek earnestly, you know, made supplication to the Lord. For example, Anna. Anna. Hallelujah. The mother of Samuel. Glory be to God. I think I read that to us sometime back when we talked about Anna and, you know, and weeping before God. In 1 Samuel and chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible tells us, So Anna rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. So now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul because something was missing in her life. Something she wanted dearly that she didn't have. And the Bible says, and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. In other words, prayed earnestly about it. Prayed earnestly about it. Hallelujah. And she vowed a vow to show you how this thing had touched her. Said, Lord, 
Say, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaiden, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaiden, but will give unto thy handmaiden a man child. Very specific. That's something we pray of supplication. Very, very specific about what you want. Amen. And we'll find it in some other prayers. So say, if thou will give your handmaiden, your handmaiden, a man child. Hallelujah. Then he says, then I will give him unto you, Lord, all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Hallelujah. They'll never bab his hair. will remain as one. So in case you are wondering where what we call Dada in Nigerian language came from. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's part of the way it was speaks from. They're consecrated to the Lord. Dead, you know? And so they don't um, cut their hair. They just leave their hair. Like that. Those ones are separated unto the Lord. Amen. That was a way or what that was a symbol or a sign of people who have been separated unto the Lord. The way you know them or when you see them, the way you can recognize them is that their hair is never cut. Stays that way. Hallelujah. So um Hannah said, I will give him back to you and look, there will be never will any razor um go um Upon his head to cut it. Hallelujah. So here you see Anna made you know, a supplication. Pray to the Lord. Honestly, David did the same thing. You know, several places in the Bible when Saul was after him, when things were going wrong in his life, you know, David would make a supplication, would cry unto the Lord. He said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry and answered me. Hallelujah. Supplication are the things that you pray for you. I don't pray supplication necessarily for somebody else. Hallelujah. But you make a supplication for you. Glory be to God. In Psalm 55, David said in verse 1, he says, Give here to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me. And my wrath, they hate, and, and in wrath, they hate me. So I was making supplication, you know, about his situation, about his need, about his circumstance, about what was happening in his life. And see, when it comes to you speaking with God, God knowing that God is your father, you must know how to make supplications before God concerning the things that you, you know, that you need, that you want, things that you want in your life. See, sometimes you see believers, they can spend hours talking about problems in their life, but they cannot spend the same amount of hours to pray to God about that same problem. That's a misnomer. You can spend a lot of time talking with this, talking with that, that friend, that person, that person, about different problems, about that, about the other. Can you imagine it? But they can't spend that amount of hours to pray. To, or to talk to the right person, if I may, concerning the same need. Hallelujah. But as a believer, as a Christian, you need to know. You need to know. You have a need, the right person to talk to is God. Not friends. Yeah, you can. Talk to friends, can talk with people. Sometimes God will direct you to talk to somebody. Hallelujah. But it should not be, you can't talk, let me put it the right way. You can't talk more with friends and talk less with God. You can't talk more with people and talk less with God about it. The right person to speak to the most concerning any need in your life because you are a believer is God. And you must make our time to talk to him about it. The Bible says, God say, says, you will seek me and find me after you must have searched how diligently. There's, there's a need for diligently seeking God. You know, Hannah has been praying to God over this problem. The problem has been on. But when she couldn't take it no more, when, uh, she knew, no, 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 this is not going to continue. 
sat before the Lord and said, said, you guys go. Told the husband and, you know, the other, the second wife and the children said, go. I want to stay before here. I'll remain here. What am I going back to? Where am I going to? Let me sit in front of the altar and make supplication. You needed enough to stay throughout the night to pray about it. Do you need it that strong to wake up early in the morning to talk to God about it? How well do you desire that with you? What you want? Show in how you pray about it. Amen? There will be a reflection on how you pray about it. But always remember, you know, that praying to God and talking to God brings peace and calmness in your heart. Produces peace. And calmness in your heart. That's the more reason you have to talk to God more about your need than any or any other person. Amen. Now the second one is a prayer of petition. Let me look at my time now. A prayer of petition. It's close to almost sometimes you find certain um, people will still refer to it as supplication. While it's also supplication because you're talking to God about your need. But this has a formal approach. I may use that word formal. It has a formal a- approach because it's a petition. You know, when, when the term petition is used, it means that it's almost that something that you should have is being, de- you are being denied of something that you should have. And so you are making petition over it. You're, you're in quotes, petitioning God. Hallelujah. I say, can you p- petition, or is a man allowed to petition God? No, the Bible tells us. The Bible says yes. The Bible says yes. Should you petition God? The Bible says yes. Let's look at it. Hallelujah. I read a number of scriptures to us in Isaiah 41, verse 21. This was God speaking to them. He said, produce your cause. Shared the Lord. Then he said, bring forth your strong reasons. Seer the king of Jacob. He said, produce your cause. Or argue your cause. Produce your strong reasons. Produce your strong reasons. In Isaiah 41, sorry, Isaiah 118, he says, Come now and let us reason together. Seer the Lord. I say, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as like crimson, say, They shall be as wool. Hallelujah. Say, come, let's reason together. When it says produce your cause or your strong reasons, now you know that there are evidence. There are reasons why we don't petition without evidence, no. And the evidence that we have in this case is the scripture, is the word of God. The way the prayer of petition is prayed is that you go into the scripture and search what the Bible says about you. The promises of God. Now when you find it, you take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, according to your word, according to your word, evidence one. First Corinthians chapter, you know, you say to the Lord, first, say second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 or verse 8. He said, but you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that he was rich. Yet for me, my own sake here, this me, he became poor. So that me through his poverty by me made rich. Lord, the last time I checked my account, it's not there like it should be. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him. By his stripes I am healed. Lord, then what is this sickness doing in my body? I refuse for this beast or this sickness to stay. It was paid for in full. It's been paid for in full, Lord. Hallelujah. This is not, oh Lord, um, I have this. No, no, no. This is, it's still in need in your life. It's still something in your life. The Bible says, look, the scripture declares, it says children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of his womb is his reward, or the fruit of the womb is his reward. There, There shall none it is a sum. There shall none be barren in the land. He said, Lord, I cannot be barren. This my womb was produced. 
See, this body cannot, you cannot be buried. The Bible says we carry our fetus, we carry our children to the full term. My, it says, your young shall not be aborted. Therefore, mm, I don't care what the doctor is saying. This one cannot be. See, that's how you take the scripture. And you, you deliberately take the scripture and go before God, who is a righteous judge, who will never deny you your rights. That as a child of God, I have access to healing. Hallelujah. There are certain things that are, that are your right as citizens of heaven. And those things that belong to us, we must never allow to, we are not allowed to live in denial. No. How does it work? You petition it. You know like you work in an office. And you, it was time for you to be promoted. It was time for you to be raised. You've done everything right. Your assessment, everything meets it. And for any reason, for whatever reason, somebody wants to deny you. Then you petition. Petition, no. This ought not to be. This ought not to be so. Look at it. Look at this. All my assessment, all my everything. Impeccable, no stain. So why am I not given? Why am I being denied? Why, why? Then you ask why. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. You know, the Bible tells us, say we will serve the Lord and he will take away sickness and disease from the midst of us. Hallelujah. And you know what you do because you serve the Lord? When sickness comes, say, Lord, thank you because this sickness cannot stay. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord Christ. No sickness will remain in my body. No disease. You know what we do when we, when we break bread? When we take communion? That's Jesus saying, do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you must know what this is. Ignorant people can petition. That's just the truth. If you're ignorant of the provisions of God, of the word of God, you will not be able to petition right. You can't insist on your right when you don't know your right. You have to know your right before you begin to insist on it. Hallelujah. You know what the devil said to, to the Satan? It's what Jesus said to Satan. He said, it is written. It is written. Sometimes all we need to say to Satan is, it is written. It is written. Do you know what is written concerning you? Do you know? Hallelujah. Find it. And when you see it, don't let it depart from you. Hold tight to it. Make war by it. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible tells us, he said, Timothy, son Timothy, he said, according to the prophecies that has gone ahead of you, he said, that you may do what? War a good warfare. Hallelujah. He says, you war a good warfare by the prophecies that has gone ahead of you. I remember Andrew Romer shared a testimony concerning the second son that has passed on and the older one called them. He said, the boy passed on. And so while they were driving to where, because it was another state, while they were driving, he said he kept on thanking God and kept on reminding God of the promise or the prophecies that has gone ahead of that child. Now, you said concerning that child, he'll be A, B, C, D. Does those so, 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 so. No, you can't die because you have not fulfilled the word of the Lord concerning you. He says, Son Timothy, According to the prophecies that has gone ahead of you, that you might do what? War a good warfare. Fight over it. Use it. And say, Lord, this is what was said concerning me. This was what was prophesied concerning me. The enemy will not stop it. It is not God that is against you. I always know it. You're not fighting God to give it to you. Hallelujah. 
You're just going to God to ensure because all grace comes from that which is yours, that which has been given to you. That you don't live in this side of time, totally denied of it. No. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, because of time, I'm going to run. And the next one there is the prayer of intercession. This we know very well, you know, standing in gap for others. Hallelujah. It is a selfless thing to do. We hardly find people today who spend time to pray for other people's needs. Of other people's situation. They only think of what concerns them. And if you're a believer, it should not be like that. Other people's pain should be your pain. To be able to feel like them and to be able to intercede and intercede right, you must be able to feel the pain for the person. Otherwise, there will be no, there will be no connection or there will be no, no um, uh, what's the right word to use here now? It, it, will, just, it will not be straight from the heart. It will not be an earnest, heartfelt prayer. That's the right word. And that's why sometimes it's tough. Oh, look at this. It's good to pray about the countries of the world. Different things are happening in different countries. Hallelujah. There are some countries that are at war. That has no bearing, no connection. That I have no connection or no bearing to. While I can pray for the peace of the world. But you see, when I'm praying for the peace of, um, for example, America or Nigeria. Where my, my native you know, country, land of my birth and all that. There's a whole lot of connection. I have siblings, I have family there. They say, well, I'm going to pray about those things. Hallelujah. But see, when I'm praying for another country that I heard of that are fighting and others, that there's no direct connection, she, it's not the same. Hallelujah. And sometimes you have to be able to learn to feel the pain of other people. Hallelujah. You have to learn to, to, to feel, you know, to feel what other people are going through. And say, oh my God. Oh my God, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be like the type that everybody is losing their job, your, their, 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 their job in your office. And you are still thanking God. That, okay, thank God I'm not the one. It's good to thank God that you are not the one. But do you know how those other people are feeling? Feel for them. Just imagine if you are the one that just lost your job. Say, Lord, I can imagine how this person is feeling. And you take our time and pray for him and his family. Thank you, Lord, because you have that. And you keep something about prayer of intercession. You don't end until you see the, the turn around. You keep praying until the situation changes. Keep interceding for them. Keep interceding, you keep praying until the situation turns around. Hallelujah. A good example of um, prayer of intercession, you know, was um, Daniel interceded for um, for Israel when they were in captivity. They have spent time praying for the nation, praying for Israel. You know, when you found out that it was time for, you know, now you can you can look at this and call this both a prayer of a petition by Daniel petitioning God concerning Israel and is also interceding for the people for the nation Israel you know when they were in captivity. How is it a prayer of a petition? Because Bible tells us that Daniel, according to the books, he found out that the number of years that the children of Israel were supposed to stay in captivity, you know, was supposed to be like seventy years, and this was over seventy. So the Bible tells us that then Daniel began to pray. Lord, but what you said in Jeremiah was that, according to Jeremiah, you said they will only stay 70 years. And after that, you know, they'll be released from captivity or they'll be, they, they will return home. It's been 70. And it's passing, Lord. What is happening? So here we see Daniel petitioning God because of what was documented, what he God has said, and also praying, interceding for the nation of Israel because of their suffering, because of what they were going through in the land of captivity, meaning to pray for deliverance, for salvation to come to them. Hallelujah. You know, 
Sometimes we dwell in a land, there's so much going on in our country that we live in now. I'll be surprised if you have a believer that is not, that's not even concerned or not praying for God's will or praying for things to turn around, praying for things to change. It's easy to just say, okay, I'm not directly affected, I'm not impacted by all this that is going on. I'm just continuing my life. But if you are a child of God, that shouldn't be you. Look, understand that in the land of captivity, Daniel was not staying with the, those in captive. Daniel lived in what you call the White House. Yeah, The Bible says he served four kings. Four. There was never a time from the day they were taken into captivity, they were separated and they were moved to the king's palace. They were supposed to be eating king's food until Daniel and Shadrach, Besha, and Abednego said, no, we don't want to eat the king's food because he could have been sacrificed to idols. So understand that Daniel wasn't suffering. In quote, he was enjoying. He was one of the governors or one of the prime ministers in the land. He was a presidential advisor. But the Bible tells us Daniel separated himself. Let's, let me read that scripture to us in Daniel chapter 1. That Daniel 9 verse 1. It says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Azarius, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. The number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So what was he doing here? Making supplication for Israel, which we call inter in interceding. Hallelujah was interceding on behalf of the nation. Lord, according to your word. When it's according to the word of God, now you're, it's a prayer of petition. Because that's what you said, Lord. You promised it. Hallelujah. And he began to pray. And that's what some, something we should know to do. To intercede. To pray for others. Hallelujah. Pray for the land. Pray for the land that you dwell. If nothing else, like I read in First Corinthians, First Timothy chapter two, the Bible says supplication says and thanksgiving should be made for all men. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving should be made for all men. Amen. It says and especially those the kings and those in authority. She makes those supplications for them. One of the reasons why we should be at peace, even in this world today, as believers, you must understand that Jesus Christ interceded or pray, interceded on our behalf, even before he left. You find this in John chapter 17. The Bible tells us in verse 6, says, I have manifested the name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world, thine they are, and thou givest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the word which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. Hallelujah. This is what his disciples. So I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Hallelujah. Isn't that interesting? Say, I pray for my own. I'm not talking about the people of the world. But for them which thou hast given me. For they are mine. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. And I'm glorified in them. And now, look how I pray for them. I'm no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father. Now he says, keep through thy name. Those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. So God pray for us, both in this world, that we will be one. 
And that's why when I see believers, you know, going against each other, churches going against churches, pastors going against pastors, I want to remind them of the prayer of Jesus. That if there was something that God prayed for the church, for the body of Christ, for those that have given to him, God has given to him, is that they will be one. Hallelujah. Division never benefits the kingdom of God. Fighting one another, talking down, no, no, never, never benefits the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That was I now. 12 now says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I have speaking, I speak in the world. Hallelujah. That they might, that they might have my, my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them the world, and the world had hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. So Jesus prayed for us that God will keep us from all evil. Hallelujah. And we should have a sense of peace, of calmness, Knowing that Jesus already said it. He said, my father hears me always. Amen. In other words, if you ever prayed, he said, God hears you. He said, there's never going to be a time that my father will not hear me. And that Jesus prayed for me. He told you Samuel. I'm at peace because he prayed that God will keep me from every evil. Hallelujah. He prayed. And so I have faith in that prayer. Okay, let's run. A time you have about seven or eight to go. Next one is a prayer of thanksgiving. This will know what it means. This you thank God for what God has done for you, for his words, for his promises, knowing that they will surely come to pass. Amen. It's giving thanks. And you should learn to have uh, live a life of gratitude. Learn to thank God for the things that God has done for you in life. In Psalm 107 verse 8 says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to their children of men. Hallelujah. For he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Not to give thanks to God with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You know, when you have asked God for something, when you have prayed to God concerning something in your life, and you have it because the Bible tells us, says if you pray, you must believe that you receive. So you can't go again asking if you truly believe that you have received. Except you did not believe that he heard you the first time. Or that you don't believe that knowing that he hears you, that he has granted you that which you have you know, requested of him. So if you understand that, the next way to pray about that issue is to keep giving him thanks. Thank you, Lord, because you hear me always. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because I am healed. Even though I still feel the pain. Thank you, Lord, because I'm healed according to your word. Thank you, Lord, because you were bruised for my iniquity. You were, you know, you were chastised for my peace and by your stripes I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. You, you yourself bore my infirmity. So I thank you, Lord, because every of my infirmity in my body is placed on you. I can't carry it. Now that's how you begin to give thanks, still utilizing the scriptures. So you move from asking to giving thanks. Thanksgiving is an expression of faith that God heard you. And knowing that he heard you, that he cannot but grant you the desires of your heart. Amen? So you must know to, you know, to be thankful, to give God thanks, a prayer of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. David said in Psalm 138 from verse 1, he says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the God, before the God will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship towards the holy temple and praise the name of the of thy of thy loving. I will praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Hallelujah. 
in the day when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. Just giving God thanks for that. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the word of the Lord. And going, you know, and went on and went on. Just giving God thanks for who he is and for the things that he has done for him. Verse 7 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Hallelujah. Say, say the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Say, forsake not the works of thy own hands. Give God thanks. Hallelujah. You know, people who are consumed with needs in their life never know to be thankful for what they have or for where they are. They don't know to be thankful because they're always like I talked about some Sundays about this, the next big thing. The eyes are fixed on you know, the next big thing. And so they fail to live in gratitude or to enjoy the moment. Thanksgiving helps you to enjoy the moment. Helps you to enjoy where you are. Helps you to enjoy what you have. Having that attitude or that heart of gratitude. Heart of thanksgiving. And so when you go before God, it's not about all about what God will do for you. Hallelujah. But give him thanks for the things that... He has done for you. Hallelujah. Now the next one, the fifth one, is a prayer of praise and worship. It's a prayer of worship. Here, in this prayer, you know, this is worshiping God for who He is. Just for who He is. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. That's worshiping God, adoring His name for who He is. Hallelujah. And David, you know, when it comes to thanksgiving, worship, um, David was is not just known for his petition, not just known for his supplication, but guess what? He's also known for his thanksgiving and a prayer of worship. And so when you read through Psalms, you will see supplication and a lot of it. You will see petition, but you also find a lot of thanksgiving, prayer of thanksgiving, and a lot of prayer of worship by the same person. And this is the best mix for our life. This is how we approach God. This is a, an effective way of communicating with God. Of having a section with God, a talking section with God. Don't fill his ears with all the needs in your life. You know, sometimes we enter a new year and all we want to line out is what God should do. That's not different from a child giving his parents, you know. At least on Christmas Day, Santa list, you know. What do they call it again, sir? The list of things he wants. Is it different? No, think about it. Is it really different? Is that how children do? When Christmas is coming, the parents are beaten because you don't know the kind of list. And all that kind of stuff. Thank God for who God is. God's heart never beats, is never intimidated by our needs or our requests. But that's how children in the house behave. All they do is come Christmas, they want to submit their list, give their list in order of priority. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, you know, in order of priority. And sometimes we do that with God. We do that with God. And that isn't a sign of one that is maturing. Should we not have things we want to accomplish in a new year? No. I normally would tell you should write down things that, you know, you want God, you and God to partner and get done in that year. But, but if that's all you do, all that you do going into a new year, all that you look forward to, all that your energy is going to be towards, then no, that isn't maturity. Thoughts of what you want to accomplish for God, things you want to do in church, in his house, ever think about it? How many times you're going to devote, how many hours you're going to be devoted to serving in the house of God? Say, this year, I want to increase my service to God. I want to 
increase the number of hours I devote to serving God, to doing things for God. Never do it. Now, David knew to do all that. No wonder the Bible tells us that God said, David was a man after my own heart. God speaking. Hallelujah. So we must know to go before God and just worship him like you will see in the beauty of his holiness. Just worship God for who God is. Hallelujah. You are an excellent king. Very good. You know, in Psalm 95, verse 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. David had some very endearing words that he used to describe God. He said, to the rock of our salvation, the one that ensures that our salvation is not, is not, is not movable, is unshakable. Hallelujah. That's what it means. So let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. Hallelujah. He is a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his is, is also. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hands. Hallelujah. And he said, today, if you hear his voice and went to us today, he said, don't harden your heart. This was just David worshiping God. Talking about the goodness of the Lord. The personality of God. He's a great king. He's a great God. He formed everything. He created everything. Hallelujah. And we must learn to appreciate God for who he is. Oh, my time is so running. Fast gone. And the next prayer is a prayer of um, dedication. Hallelujah. You can call it prayer of consecration. You can call it a prayer of submission. However, hallelujah. A good example of this is the prayer that Jesus prayed when he was about to go to the cross in Luke chapter 22 and verse 41. He says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. But thy will be done. This is a prayer of submission. Putting God's will for you ahead of what you want. God's plan and purpose for your life ahead, prioritizing it. Saying, Lord, I know I, I might like this, I want this, but not, Lord, not what I want, but what you want for me. And like I said last time, it's you recognizing that what God, God's intention for you, God's plan for you is better than what you can ever think or imagine for yourself. Hallelujah. That's learning to pray a prayer of submission or concentration. Uh, and Paul prayed this prayer. There are different uh, all these type of prayers for uh, for the different churches. You find it in Philippians, uh, Ephesians chapter one. You know, from verse seventeen, I pray. From the day I heard about your faith, I know I never ceased to give thanks for you. Hallelujah! I began to pray that the eyes of understanding may be enlightened. May God grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you get to know the hope of His calling. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. And in, in Colossians, pray the same prayer. And so Paul prayed this number of prayers um, for the different churches. Amen. Oh my goodness. I still got a lot to do on time. Okay. I will just rush through them. Now, the next one I'll talk about is the prayer of faith. Amen. It's not all prayers that, you know, um, how would I put it now? That you have to. The best way to put it is not all prayer that you, you have to pray to God for. There are some things that you speak to. Hallelujah. And a good example of a prayer of faith. Because you know God's provision. You know the will of God. You know that you, you have the authority. Hallelujah. To speak in this matter. So the good prayer of faith is when we see uh, Jesus said to the, to, um, to the fig tree. He says, as from this day henceforth, you will no longer bear fruit. 
and when the disciples came and found out that, hey, master, do you know that tree you spoke to the other day is dead? And Jesus said to them, he said, have faith in God. He said, for very, very, I say unto you that whatsoever things you shall he said, that whatsoever you shall say Whosoever you shall say on whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he see shall come to pass. He says, You shall have whatsoever you said. So it's not saying this time around you have to pray God to remove the mountain. He said, You speak to the mountain. Why? Because you understand that you have authority. You understand that you know you 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 God has you are a child of God. Hallelujah. It's the same way you can say, devil, be gone. You're not praying to God to come and remove the devil. You're not praying to God to come and cast out the devil. No, the Bible says we shall cast out devil. Say in his name, we will cast out devil. So you see somebody possessed with devil. He said in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, devil, be gone. Hallelujah. Devil, be gone. Hallelujah. In James in chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? So let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And he, if he has committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. Hallelujah. And so it is a prayer of faith. So you say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed. You're not praying God necessary to come and heal the person. He said, we shall lay hands on the sick. He said, call on the elders of the church. Call on the people. And when they come, he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed. You speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. And you must know, at, you know, at what point do you utilize or do you do you do this? You must you must know how to utilize. You know why? Because you you recognize the authority of God in your life. These things are done because you you. It's just like a police officer. If he sees a crime, he's not going to go call the law to come and arrest. No, he is the law. He is the law. He is authorized. What does he do? He effects the will of the master, of the land, the law of the land. He effects it. He brings it, you know. And that's what we do. Knowing the will of God. Knowing the provision of God. And that we are authorized. So we can say to the mountains, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And the Bible says, if thou not in his heart, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. There's an interesting scripture I'd like for you to consider. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 45 and verse 11. It said, Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and His Maker. He said, Ask of me things to come. He said, Ask of me, you know, things to come. Then He said, Concerning my, sorry, Ask of me things to come concerning my sons. Then concerning the works of my hands, He said, Command you me. I don't know if you're seeing it. The Lord said, concerning the works of my hands. Concerning, you know, things to come about your sons and other, and other. He says, you can ask me. So there are things the Lord said, ask me of the things concerning to come. And some other things he didn't say, ask me. He said, command you me. Hallelujah. And so you must know when you say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of my family. Get out of this place. Why? You're commanding in the name of the Lord. You must know. Don't tolerate devil. Don't tolerate iniquity. Don't tolerate evil. And you see Satan aggression, you know where you are. Cast him out. Hallelujah. Not just in your life, but in the life of people around you. You know, it's like having an ownership mentality. Evil does not work around where I am. It does not prevail. Amen. Glory be to God. Eight, prayer of agreement. Hallelujah. This we know in Matthew 18 and 19. The Bible tells us, again, I say unto you that if two or if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, says, it shall be done for them 
of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in each of them. So whatever any two of us shall agree, hallelujah. What? Anything that two of us shall agree. Now the rule to this kind of prayer is that we must be in agreement. That's the rule. We must be in agreement. It's a prayer that husband and wife should know to pray. That, you know, um, should learn to pray and take advantage of. But you know, um, we must be in agreement for it to work. Hallelujah. The, the wife cannot be believing for one thing and the husband is believing for another thing. If they come together and they're praying about it, you know, um, without agreement, you know, it doesn't work. It's a prayer of agreement. Hallelujah. And it's prayed over any matter. Hallelujah. I mean, as pastors, we can come together and pray a prayer of agreement concerning the biddings of God in our land. As a, you know, prayer of agreement can be prayed by for anything, for any reason, just but it must be according to the will of God and we, the people praying it must be in agreement. Hallelujah. And the last one is corporate prayers. I know when this works. But sometimes people wonder, even though now, um, it's important that I pray for me, I pray concerning things individually, but also it's very important that we, as believers, we know to come together, you know, to pray. There's a provision for that. That's why I say, where any two or three are gathered in my name, say, dear, I am in their midst. Hallelujah. So there is a prayer that takes place in a gathering. The Bible tells us concerning the disciples. It says when they were in upper room, together in one accord, praying, what happened? See, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came down. So there is a corporate prayer. You take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. There are certain things. You know, there are times I want to pray for an individual. I, say, I feel led. I say, no, okay. Um, remind me in service and I'll pray for you in service. What's the difference between me praying right there or praying in the service? Because I recognize the scripture. Hallelujah. My recognizing of this scripture, my believing in this scripture is what sometimes would let to me. I say, okay, I want to pray for you during service when we are gathered in his name. I know that he's there present. There's tremendous power that is made available at that time. So I take advantage of that. I say, okay, we'll pray about it in service. Hallelujah. Why? Corporate prayer. That's why people can call it fast, you know, come pray over issues. We come together corporately. You know, what we do online, through Zoom, that's corporate prayers. Don't take it for granted. Don't think it's just a light thing. Sometimes because we don't see how things are directly impacted, we have no knowledge of how these things are working. But if only God opens your eyes to see how relevant, how important, how necessary our time of prayers, how it is in His presence, how it works in our lives, in our church as a people, how it keeps us, how it delivers us, how it bonds us, how it, you know, sometimes then, you know, we'll be more eager, we'll be, we'll be all in don't be like one that is ignorant of spiritual things. Understand the things of the Spirit. Understand the things that are written in the Bible. Follow it like you believe it. If the Bible tells us about the presence of God when we are gathered, treasure it. Take advantage of it. Like I said to you, the reason why I pray, say certain things, I tell people, okay, I like to pray for you during service. What is it different? Is it not me? Is it not still my mouth? It's still my mouth that I wish to pray. It's still, the, it's still be me that will do the prayer. So why do I choose to do it in service at a certain hour, at a certain time than others? It's the recognition of the power of God and the working of God, the spirit of God. And we must recognize it. Recognize it for you and take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Recognize it. Never commonize it. It works, brothers and sisters. I'm a testimony of it. It works. There are certain things I will not do 
I take advantage. See, I learn to take advantage of certain things in my life. And if you know anything about me, you will know that. There are things I will insist on senior pastor to pray for. You know, I just can you pray this for me? Can you pray this for me? Can you, can you, can you speak some word? You know, can you? Some other people might take it for granted. So, look, I've not seen my wife for like three years or so. They were about to come. They had gotten their visa. They had gotten their ticket. They were about to leave. But senior pastor was here. I told them, I said, wait. Yes, wait till he comes back. When they return, they will bless you. They will pray for you guys and send you forth. Wait. But somebody might say, ah, can't the church just, can't, can't anybody, can yeah. And when someone is like that, it's because you have not learned to recognize spiritual things. And you're not taking advantage of it for life. Know it and take advantage. If you believe the Bible, you better take advantage of it. Treasure it. There are certain people's words that I treasure. I treasure the prayers and the declaration of authorities in my life. A senior pastor. My mother, my wife's mother, irrespective of anything. There are people that are that, when they call, they still bless me, they pray for me. My elder brothers, they were God's choice for my life. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with their character, their personality. It has everything to do with their position in my life. So I take advantage of it. Hallelujah. When we call a fast, when we call a prayer time, avail yourself, brothers and sisters. This is how I know whether that need in your life is serious or is pressing. I love to know. Is it really pressing? Is it that important? I see it by the way you pray about it. By the way you talk to God about it. That's the way I know it's important to you. It will not be a five-minute thing. It will not be a, you won't gross over it, no. You'll be like, oh Lord, Lord my God. You are my, you will stay there. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. You know, the essence of this um, teaching on prayer is so that you pray, you devote time to prayer, and you'll pray right. Take the Bible, search the scripture. Arm yourself with prayer, if you may, vocabulary to pray. With the right words to pray. They come from the scripture. They don't come from dictionary or from any other thing. They come from the scripture. The right scripture words to pray with comes from the Bible. Search it out. Pray with it. Talk to God with it. He honors his word more than any other.